The Amazonian warrior goes undercover, under the DC Cover Girls line, that is. Here's your look at the new DC Collectibles, DC Cover Girls, Joelle Jones, Wonder Woman. Amazonian by birth and leader by trade, Wonder Woman is designed by Joelle Jones, is a natural addition to the DC Cover Girls statue line. In this statue, Wonder Woman is armed with the lasso of truth as well as a smoldering glare. Her legendary beauty, grace, and power make her stand out in any space she inhabits, be it in the battlefield, the Hall of Justice, or Joelle Jones' drawn comic book. Designed by the Eisner Award-nominated Joelle Jones, this premium pollen resin statue is 11 and a half inches tall and is limited to only 5,000 pieces worldwide. Now, 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 we are going to get this review underway, and to start that off, we're going to first figure out how tall Wonder Woman stands. Sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? I know in the beginning of this review, I had mentioned that the statue stands 11 and a half inches, but just do want to double check that, because I'm thorough like that. Ultra Measuretron is telling me, according to its readouts, 11 and a half. Yeah, that's about right. You can mark that down. Mark it in your Trapper Keeper. Trapper Keeper, how old is this guy? 11 and a half inches in height is the Wonder Woman from Joel Jones, and in centimeters you're looking at about 30 centimeters tall, 29.5 to be exact. First and foremost, I want to send out a big thank you to the folks over at DC Collectibles who were nice enough to send this my way. Uh, if you are interested in picking up the Joelle Jones Wonder Woman, it should be available now in comic book stores, online stores, and there you go. Online stores and comic book stores. Retail stores, not so much. Uh, the statue comes in two pieces. Let me go ahead and very carefully take Wonder Woman off. We'll put her right there. Just stay right there for a second. Well, let's have a look at the display stand that comes included with the statue. A circular display stand, same of which we've also seen with the Batgirl that we've reviewed on this channel. I do also believe I reviewed uh, Harley Quinn, which was also a Joelle Jones piece. Really have fallen in love with Joelle Jones's work, specifically translating it to statue form. Now, the same stand would look the same as those other statues just mentioned. So if you got Joelle Jones' signature down below, follows off with a circle, an inner circle, running around the full diameter, parameter, circumference, around the circle itself. And then you've got a couple of peg holes right there. I'll show you how that works in a second. On the back side, 5,000 pieces. This is, happens to be an Artist Proof, Artist Proof 03. And you've got yourself some felt feet underneath to prevent scratching on surfaces. One thing about statues like this, though, is that they have very easy to peg in holes or easy to peg in pegs into the supplied holes of the display stand. You'll also see, too, that one peg is longer than the other. Although normally they would be the same, well, they would be in differencing sizes. Larger size on the back, usually a smaller peg on the front. Here, though, it almost seems to be identical to one another. It seems like it's pretty straightforward. However, there is only obviously one way to attach it, and the best easiest rule of thumb is that you're gonna want the signature facing forward. Now, if you are interested, because I'm all about supplying you guys with information, there you go, that's what it looks like when you attach it in place. Now, if you wanna flip it around, 
you can't <laughs> you can't flip it around you can't flip it around because her feet ultimately would be over here sometimes you have the means to flip them around but I just want to show you. you you can't do that I fan I ran the full course of describing that to you ultimately though you, you, you can't peg it anywhere other than the place I've already noted here as for the statue itself, it seems to adopt the now standard Gadot uh, Wonder Woman outfit made famous in the original Batman v Superman in which Gal Gadot sported this Wonder Woman outfit. I don't think it actually originated in comics prior to that. There would have been, of course, variations to that, but it sort of has adopted since then that standard Gal Gadot type of Wonder Woman outfit. Uh, the red and blue are equally done quite well, uh, I would say, though, I don't know if, if the intention is supposed to be there, but it seems like there's some wearing of the red. You'll see that in the chest section there. Seems like it has adopted a little bit of that yellow. You can see it right there. I'm going to do my best in these reviews to keep my fingers away so you guys can see exactly the closer up details. But can you not see right there? It looks like there's a little bit of scuffing where almost like the red isn't fully finished. Now, this can be successful, ironically enough. It's not necessarily a miss because it does give some natural wear and tear to her armor. So again, if that is supposed to be there, I don't feel like it is. I feel like maybe, especially especially right there, like, well, in the chest section there, it seems like it. you could see a little bit of a darker color underneath that, but I'm willing to say I think it's successful for the fact that she is, of course, wearing Amazonian armor. Some natural wear and tear should really happen. Uh, down below, you've got some additional blue, uh, starting here, actually. You've got the blue and the gold outlined in gold, and you've got the white stars in there. It's a little messy, unfortunately. I mean, honestly speaking, it does look like you can see some more obvious brush marks, or you can kind of see where like the blue has been caked on a little bit heavier than expected. Uh, even the same on the sides as well. I, I feel as if almost the blue looks like it's been brushed on, where possibly the red has been maybe airbrushed on. You, I say that only because it seems like you can see the brush strokes a little bit more obvious here in the blue than you can in the red. Uh, the gold trim does really finish off everything rather nicely here. Um, as for her face, we'll just go ahead and spin this around. What an absolutely gorgeous head sculpt. I seem to be a sucker, it seems, when it comes to DC vixens. Female v villains or female heroes alike, uh, the Batwomans, the Batgirls, the Wonder Woman, the Poison Ivies, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman, to name a few. Seems every time there's a new statue release of them, I anxiously await picking these up ones up for myself. Uh, the Wonder Woman, though, specifically Joelle Jones' Wonder Woman, I was very anxious to see this. So much so, I was watching, leading up to this one actually arriving in the mail, I was checking out other people's reviews of this statue, just again, more anxiously awaiting for what would be in store for this humbled reviewer when she eventually arrived. Now again, I really think that head sculpt is fantastic. She's got a very narrow, very high cheekboned face, which actually quite works well for Wonder Woman. Uh, when you do look at her from a distance, uh, she is a very muscular Wonder Woman, very uh, very narrow limbs, but as you can see, very ripped, both in the arms, the upper chest section in her shoulders, and then a very muscular pair of legs there as well. So I like that they've balanced the fact that she's a very uh, got a very feminine form to her, but then again, she's very strong, very powerful there as well. Uh, her gauntlets... Uh, really have actually been downgraded to just simple silver. No stars, no additional deca uh, details anywhere on there, but I actually like it a little bit more. It kind of keeps it just toned down a bit. You don't need to excessively add stars, stripes, and other uh, you know little uh, details and stuff like that to the statue. So I'm kind of glad that they kept it very neutral, very simplified in this dark gunmetal gray. And the gunmetal gray looks really great against the backdrop of the red and the blue and the gold. Uh, but again, really love the head sculpt. Uh, one thing also, I enjoy the fact that the mouth is partially open. Getting a little bit of extra teeth and for the fact that the teeth are further sunken back as they should be to lips, 
kind of gives an extra little bit of depth. Now, speaking of depth, we can't help but spin it around. And you love, I love the layering effect right here of how the hair kind of waves its way over in front of the face. It breaks up a little bit around the sides there where you can kind of see a little bit of the face peeking through in between the strands of the hair. But it has like a, a wave-like flow to the hair. Just glorious, just glorious, glorious coloring as well. I will look at this though, I mean, even under in natural light, uh, even upstairs before I started this review and have kind of had this statue out for a while just admiring this, but underneath the reviewing light, uh, I further can add on to the fact that the hair doesn't look like it's black. Instead, it actually looks like it's a really dark, dark, dark gray. Uh, pitch black actually, I think would have detracted a little bit from the statue. Thank goodness they went the route of, uh, again, a, a lighter, lighter shade of black. It's not quite jet black. It almost seems like it's got a little bit of a gray tone to it. So if you can see it there with the lighting reflecting of it rather nicely, I must say. Her lasso of truth uh, is wire-framed. Uh, starts down at, below, at the bottom and works its way at the top and wraps around her arm. Then wraps straight across. I love how it's got that pull to it. Uh, just showing an aggressive strength between her two hands here. And then the rest, the excess amounts of the lasso wrapped around her arms. Uh, now this being wireframe, I don't have as much the risk to worry about this potentially breaking because again, it's a little bit more of a wireframe. The thing you do have to, of course, worry about is being that this wireframe, it's got a natural curve to it. And if you bend it, if you, you know, knock against it, anything that would crimp or leave a little crease in that wire would of course ruin the effect that they're trying to go with here. I did also actually take the statue off the stand. I find it's actually a little bit easier. It's a small enough statue too that I can kind of get closer with it without the worrying and the fuss and uh, just the worrying of having the statue attached to the bottom and try to hold it there as well. Uh, you got the little loop there located on the side. Again, a very, very much movie sort of themed Wonder Woman. You know, when I'm looking at this particular statue, the one thing that actually kind of a, kind of makes me think about is the original DC Direct Wonder Woman standalone figure wave. If you ever had not seen, if you haven't not seen that figure, uh, go back, you can watch it on this channel. I've done a review, an extensive review. I think actually two reviews on that Wonder Woman figure. And I can't help but feel like the Joel Jones Wonder Woman takes some cues from it. Not obviously intentional, but indirectly, it does feel like I'm looking at a statue version of that DC Direct Wonder Woman, which just so happens also to be one of my all-time favorite Wonder Woman figures that I have in my collection. There's really not much I would say that I have faults with this statue. Let me go ahead and get this back on its display base. There we go. Uh, I can't say there's anything I really would fault this this statue for. It's got to be definitely one of the most beautiful looking Wonder Woman statues that I've seen in recent memory. The face sculpt is absolutely gorgeous, capturing what I picture to be a definitive Wonder Woman, sort of a chiseled, muscular looking, yet still feminine looking Wonder Woman. And I think Joelle Jones captures it perfectly. To the credit, though, of DC Collectibles, DC Collectibles also captures accurately the original artwork that Joelle would have done and translated here into this statue here. The DC Cover Girls Wonder Woman by Joelle Jones is also a good example of how a statue, in this case, looks in my opinion, a lot better out of box than it does depicted on the front of the box. It's probably just the way the photography was done and just the way the lighting hit it. But the statue on the front of the box almost depicts the statue looking slightly darker. The darker tones to the skin and almost even like the eyes, the lips and the hair are way too dark. And I'm glad getting it out of the box, it didn't actually look like that at all. The bright crystal blue eyes that Diana sports here, as well as the more visible teeth, I actually think are bonus enhancements to this statue versus the way it looks on the front of the box. And again, we've kind of seen this in a couple of reviews in the past where sometimes the imagery on the front of the box can be misleading. Uh, hopefully reviews like this will give you guys a true representation of what statues do actually look like when you get them out of the box. Sometimes they do look a little bit different than the, what they look like on the front of the box. And hopefully this review has helped. 
Uh, every single time it seems to be when a new Wonder Woman statue, I mentioned in this review that vixens, DC vixens like Catwoman, the Poison Ivies, the Harley Quinns, the Wonder Woman, and uh, even Supergirl, generally when they come out in statue form, I always find them to be very successful looking outings. Specifically Wonder Woman. It seems like every time a new Wonder Woman statue comes out, I immediately want to pick it up and I always say, this is a great looking Wonder Woman statue. Now, this one specifically has captured my heart and there's something about the face that I absolutely adore. Again, it kind of reminds me, takes me back to when I initially had a look at the DC Direct Wonder Woman figure. I kind of feel like I'm getting a little bit of that DC Direct Wonder Woman vibe happening here in the Joel Jones statue release. It does also have the Gal Gadot style of Wonder Woman outfit, which I'm all for. Short of just some vis visible uh, brush strokes that you can kind of see where the paint has been done. And I also, something I didn't mention in this review and kind of the benefit of doing these, these final looks, some points that I can kind of talk about that I missed before. Um, I do find like the reds, if you look at them and just kind of even just getting a glance at it right now, the reds do come across a little bit more like warmer oranges. I'm not necessarily the saying that that's a bad idea i'm still happy with the figure but i do notice that the reds look a little bit closer to oranges than they do actually red vibrant red and again i think it works well for this particular statue but i feel the need to want to point that out just in case somebody also spotted that as well in this review some good news though if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself dc cover girls by joel jones the wonder woman statue should be available now online if you are interested in picking up if you're an online kind of person or you should be able to find it now at your local comic book stores. I think they're actually stocking it right now. A big thank you, by the way, also to the folks over at DC Collectibles who are nice enough to fire this my way. Uh, again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, if you're a fan of Wonder Woman like I am, I think you're really, really going to enjoy having this one in your collection. If you guys haven't had a chance yet and you're new to this channel, come on in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and beeline it over, even though it's probably going to be more like a minus sign. Move your minus sign over to a bell notification. It should be located right next door. Make sure you turn on your bell notification to maximum strength to guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. We're going to have a look at some upcoming DC collectible reviews in future videos, so stay tuned for that. And if also as well, you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other uh, DC collectible reviews, there's playlists available on the channel, or you can also find the link down below in the video description. I try to cover off all bases. Make sure you cover off all bases by coming back to this channel on a regular basis as certainly no more videos will be coming your way. Let me know what you guys also think of this statue down below, whether you've picked it up for yourself or solely just based on this review and this review alone. Let me know down below what you guys think of the Joelle Jones DC Cover Girls Wonder Woman statue. And I'll see you guys next time.